Hello and welcome to this presentation on setting a variable gap size on the contact between two bodies. If we go look at a contact pair, we have the ability to put in a surface normal offset down here under interface treatment and putting a number in. But this is a constant number and there's no way to make it a function of where we are in space. This can be done with APDL commands if we set up the contact size in a table array. Let's go up. Here's our geometry. We have two rectangular bodies in contact with each other. When the bodies are imported, a contact pair is automatically set up between them. I right-clicked and used flip contact target to get the contact side where I want it. The contact is in red and I wanted it on the smaller body. Note that in the details for the contact pair, I put in a pinball radius right here, and I set it, you can see it, the little blue sphere, I set it to be bigger than the kind of gap I'm going to put in. I made another change. I set my detection method to be nodal, normal to target, so that the gap size is measured in a direction perpendicular to that blue target face. That gave me better accuracy in this example. The contact pair was set to asymmetric. I only want to work the contact in one direction, and I want the gap on that red contact side with an offset. I did not need trim contact, and setting up a gap only has real meaning if it's one of the nonlinear contact types. Frictionless, or rough, or frictional, one of those three. So I've set that contact pair up. I've set up a coordinate system right here, located at the bottom of the smaller block, and in the y direction I'm measuring how far I travel up the block. I want a gap size that's varying as we move in y. Let's go check these APDL commands. I set up a table array. I call it my gap. It's type table as a dimensioned array. Two rows. I'm just having linear variation in gap tracing in the y direction, and I refer to the coordinate system for how that y value is oriented. Go back up my coordinate system. I'm going to release 18.2, and here I can put in a name, a variable name, that will become the number of the coordinate system, the one you see right here. In earlier versions of ANSYS, you could go to Coordinate System and click Manual and set it up that way inserting the number. Let's go look at the rest of this. I'm going from a position in the y direction of 0. This is in the 0th column of the table array. Up to a max of 2.0716. Now I'm in the unit system of inches. You can see it right here. And I have to be very careful that I solve in that system of units. Where did I get the 2.0716? Well, if I go look at the geometry here, and I click on two vertices, this one and this one, and hit this information button, it shows me the distance between them was 2.0716. So that's where I got the distance measurement that I use in that local coordinate system. So there are the two y values for this in the zeroth column, and then in the first column, I want a gap of zero at the beginning, the zero position, and a gap with a minus sign, a tenth of an inch, up at the top. Let's go see if this worked. Here's my model. A fixed support here, fixed support there, no other loads, I'm holding these blocks in space. I solve. There's my mesh. Here's the status. I'm in near contact. I'm inside the pinball. My penetration is zero because I have not put a plus sign in for the offset, pushing one body into the other. And my gap varies from virtually zero at one end, down here at the bottom, up to a tenth of an inch at the top. So there, using surface normal offset with a table array, I've achieved the spatially varying gap size that I wanted. If I go to the help system for 18.2, there's a section in there on 
setting real constants and element options in the contact technology guide. So it's the documentation, mechanical APDL, contact technology guide, section 3.9. In there, they'll talk about things a bit, and you'll discover that it's surface normal offset right there. It's real constant 10 that's used to control that. Back to the commands. I'm changing a real constant. CID is the right here, the parameter that tells us what real constant we're dealing with. Position number 10 in the real constants table. And that's where I refer to the size of the gap, not with a number now, but by referring to the table array name in percent signs. And that's how this was done. So, thank you for joining me.